Welcome to 10 Minute KQL. Whether you're a technology pro looking to master the Custo query language or new to the world of IT and looking to learn your first language, 10 Minute KQL is a place to level up your skills. This is the eighth video in the KQL Advanced series. In the last session, we completed our parsing string series. In today's session, we'll learn how to interact with IPs in KQL. If you find value in these videos, please support the channel by hitting the like button. And if you want to receive notifications of new videos, hit the subscribe button with the notification bell. The KQL language has several built-in functions that will help us work with IP addresses. For these examples, we'll be using the free Azure Data Explorer datasets found at kc7cyber.com. We're working in the Krusty Krab module, which simulates an attack on a fictitious company. When we look at the tables available to us, we see that one is authentication events. And as we sample this table, we see that it lists successful and failed authentication attempts to the email server for the company. Most of the authentications are coming from internal IP addresses associated with a corporate network. But we suspect an attack and want to see who's been authenticating from public IP addresses. To help us with this query, we can use the IPv4 is private function. This gives us a true false value whether or not the IP is internal. As we extend a new field and use the new function, we simply place the field we want to conduct the true false evaluation in the parentheses, which in this case is the src underscore IP field. When we run this query, we can see that some are true and some are false. To help us make sense of this data at scale, let's try to identify which individuals have successful authentications from both public and private IPs. We can first filter for successful authentications, which takes us from 21,000 records down to 10,000 records. We can summarize the count of logins from both internal and public IP for each user. In this environment, it seems normal for users to be authenticating from public IPs. Later during an investigation, if we have an employee we suspect of a compromise, we can modify this query a little to list out all the public IPs associated with each individual. This may help our investigation to identify anomalies. If we want to identify a range of IPs, then identify if the IPs in our data set are in that range, we can use the IPv4 is in range function. We can define which field to analyze, then define the range, and we receive a true false value. If we need the subnet mask to be parsed out and identified, you can use the IPv4 net mask suffix function. If no subnet mask is present in the field, the default will be a mask of 32. If we have a list of IPs and we want to associate a geolocation with each IP, we can use the geoinfo from IP addresses function. Keep in mind that the geolocations associated with IP addresses are not precise and should not be trusted as an authoritative source of location. You can see that internal IP addresses do not present a location value, but public IPs do in a JSON format with a country, state, city, and lat long keys.
with associated values when they're known. When we check the schema, we can see that the JSON is already in a dynamic data type, so it's ready to be parsed. We can easily use Evaluate Bag Unpack to parse the keys into their own fields for filtering. We can also summarize account by country. If we have threat intelligence on a possible attack campaign, this could be used to assist us, although sophisticated threat actors will likely mask their location using one of many available methods. When we look at IP addresses, they're in dotted decimal notation, and they consist of four octets separated by periods. If you need to convert to a big Endian version of the IP to be used in calculations or for comparisons, KQL has a function for this. This conversion takes all the binary values of each of the four octets and it concatenates them all together, making one long binary string of all four octets. Each octet is multiplied by a specific exponent to create a final value. If the big endian number is needed, we can use parse IPv4. You may have a starting IP and an ending IP associated with a range of IPs and want to find all the potential CIDR ranges possible. In this case, we can use the IPv4 range2 CIDR list function. In this case, we're just creating a new field with a start and end IP for our range. When we run this query, we see the potential subnets in that range. This could be useful for network admins that need to configure subnets within a given range. In addition to the IPv4 functions shown in this session, KQL also has functions for IPv6. That's all for today's session on working with IP addresses in KQL. In our next session, we'll cover pivoting and materialize. Then we'll have a final session in the advanced series on functions. For homework today, pick any module in the kc7cyber.com free ADX datasets. Pick a country of choice and identify how many successful sign-ins occurred from that country. Place your query in the comment section to learn with and help others. If you find value in these videos, please support the channel by hitting the like button. And if you want to receive notifications of new videos, hit the subscribe button with the notification bell.